Why do we have to pray? Number one. In this kingdom we pray first because it is a command. Believers are commanded to pray. This is a little Bible study now. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Please write it down. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Remember, we are taught to pray. So there is, we are receiving the teaching now so that our prayer will be effective. Prayer is a command for believers. Luke 18 and verse 1. And he speak a parable unto them, unto this end, that men, not some men, men, once you are a man, you are mandated in this kingdom to pray. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, pray without ceasing. That does not mean pray from morning till night. You will live an ineffective life. It means be consistent in your prayer life. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Don't go on break and resume after five months. Are we together? Be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. The second reason why we need to pray is that it is one of the strategies for fellowship with the Father. It is not the only platform, but it is one of the, fellowship, the, the platforms. Many people think that prayer is the only way to fellowship with the Father. No, no. But it is one of the major strategies for fellowship. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Paul is teaching here. And he's teaching the church in Corinth about prayer. And he said, please give it to us, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And now he's saying it, of course, with respect to praying in tongues. But he said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Look up, please. Speaketh not unto men. Not unto men. Not unto men. This is not the gift of, of tongues. Are we together? Like a, a ministry, one of the nine gifts. No. He's saying, he speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth it, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So it's very important. It is one of the strategies for fellowship, for communion. It was Paul that was, was praying and he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember? He said, the love of God. And then he said, the communion. That's where we get the word koinonia from. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Be with you always. The communion, it means the sharing together. It means intimacy. It means intercourse. It means the participation of the Spirit. The oneness that comes through fellowship. He's praying that it remains with the saints. Why? Because it is only with God that all things are possible. And so whatever makes you to lose your connection and to rob you of an opportunity for intimacy has also destroyed your potential for efficiency. It is one of the strategies for fellowship. Number three. Why do we pray? Please never forget this. God is making our prayer lives fruitful. Why do we pray? Number three, it is a platform for growth and transformation. The growth process of the believer was so designed that prayer will play a major part in your growth. That means believers that don't pray cannot grow effectively. In fact, cannot even grow. It is a platform for growth and transformation. Three scriptures. Luke chapter 9. Please give it to us. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings. He took Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to do what? Not to rest. To pray. Next verse. And as he prayed, what happened? The fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment became white and glistering. That glory and that transformation came as a result of prayer. So when you pray, 
it is a system allocated for your growth and for your transformation. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4. That's the second verse you will write under that point. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. After that, we'll go to the book of Jude. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edifieth there is, is an architectural term. It means that he builds up. He builds up himself. Are we together? That means that you build up yourself akin to an exercise. Imagine someone who is working out every day and just making sure that he's fit and healthy. This is what he's saying. That he that prays in an unknown tongue, he that prays now, edifies himself. So it's a system for growth. Jude, Jude has only one chapter and we we'll read verse 20. It says, but ye beloved, if you are not beloved, that scripture is not for you, but, it, but ye beloved, building up yourselves, building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying, by praying, you build up yourself on your most holy faith. What does this mean? That you are growing and increasing in discernment. You are growing and in your, your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit are being heightened and fine-tuned in the place of prayer. One of the classic signs of prayerlessness is lack of discernment. You know immediately that a man's prayer life is dead. When your discernment is dead. What is discernment? The faculty of perception. The faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to be able to perceive the impulses of the realm of the spirit. To perceive danger. To perceive joy. To perceive the activity of angels. Are we together now? All of these things. Remember, look up. Watch this. Man is spirit. Everybody says spirit. That man lives in a body. Man is not spirit like a separate entity. Soul like a separate entity. Then body like a separate entity. That teaching is not very accurate. Are we together? Man is a spirit primarily. That means his sphere of reality is the realm of the spirit. This spirit cannot interact with the earth realm. Because based on the law of territory... It must have a material body that is consistent with that ecosystem to be able to walk. Are we together now? So this spirit, if it finds its way to the earth, it will move the same way demons are moving. And so God made this spirit a legal occupant in the earth by giving it a material body. Are we together? But there, there was a challenge and God needed to solve it. Why? Because the earth realm and the realm of the spirit, they are all part of God's kingdom, but the dimensional nature of their operation makes it impossible for spirit to operate and body to come there. You cannot switch them. So there is, a, there is an issue now. The spirit cannot relate with the body because there is a disparity in the realms. And so God decided to create a bridge. The faculty that connects the spirit and the body, he called it a mind. Are we together now? That that mind consists of will, emotions and intellect those faculties were put as the bridge that the spirit will use to interact with the body and the bridge that the body will use to execute the impulses of the spirit now watch this when you call man a soul what you mean is the spirit in partnership with this faculty of consciousness that's what is called a soul are we together now if a man dies you don't see three people coming out or two people in the air going to either heaven or hell and then you see a body lying down there. No, there is no record of that in scripture. Jesus gave up a ghost, not many ghosts. Only one spirit left that body and only one spirit returned. Are, you, are, are we together now? Yes. The realm of the spirit, watch this, controls the physical realm. The Bible tells us that. That the things that appear, paraphrasing, came from the things which do not appear. Remember, I never said the things that are not real. They just 
are unreal from this dimension. That means that man being spirit and dwelling in a body has an advantage of the duality of realms. Are we together now? That dual nature is what makes the body to receive impulses that it cannot explain. So when you stand and suddenly there is a heaviness in your heart, you don't even know why. There's no joy again. It's as if the spirit man is perceiving something from the realm of the spirit. And then because it is connected through the mind to the body, it's trying to transmute that. But because, but because your prayer life is down, look up please. The, the, the fortitude to receive that perception so that the body can execute what the spirit is saying is not there. I'll give you an instance. The spirit of death can be roaming around a family. Are we together? And now, because in the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. I hope you know. Um, there are secrets, but what I mean is that nothing is hidden, really. There are secrets even in the spirit, but nothing is hidden. Are we together? Now, watch this. When the spirit of death is roaming around, your spirit is perceiving it. Your spirit knows. The spirit of death knows. If you came out of your body in the realm of the spirit, you will no longer be in a vision. Ah, death, what are you doing here? Say, ah, I've been here. Is it that I'm, I'm not just coming? I've been there. But because the body was unfruitful, excuse me, are we together? The body was unfruitful. So when you begin to pray, what happens is that there is a rearranging. Because the way the flesh works, it, it attempts to subjugate the spirit to a point where it cannot gain that ascendance. This is where the advantage of things like fasting and so on and so forth can come in. Are we together now? All of this we are going to discuss. But generally this man, the spirit of death is loitering around his vicinity. And he's moving around because he's deadened in the flesh. His organs of perceiving. Imagine in the physical that you cannot hear. Hello? You cannot um, smell. You cannot see. You cannot sense. Are you alive? Are we together now? Yes. You are not alive. Because I can be killing you and you are not aware. The only thing you will just know that you are fainting. And then you go into coma and die. Because the ability is not there. I can be talking to you, supplying an information you cannot hear. The same way there are physical senses, there are also spiritual senses. And that these spiritual senses, the same way you have blindness, you can have spiritual blindness. Deafness, you can have spiritual deafness. Are we together? Yes. The same way your body, I don't know the name of what the sickness is, where people don't feel when you touch them. You can have that same thing too in the realm of the spirit. So even if the Holy Spirit is saying, Mr. Man, you are, not, you are not there at all. And the Bible says, I'm explaining to you that when you begin to pray, what is happening is that there is a fine tuning. The spirit, your spirit man, begins to gain ascendance. And you can stand and just sense and know. And because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened, you, it, the Holy Spirit is at liberty based on the strength of your spirit man, to use whatever faculty he pleases to reveal to you what to do. So he can use your hearing and you hear. He can use your seeing, you will see a vision. He can use the knowing in your heart and you come with perception. He can even move you into his will. The more you pray, you are giving the Holy Spirit the versatility of options to be able to communicate the will of God to you. Are you getting what this, this scripture is saying now? That means that people who don't pray, imagine that this guy is blind spiritually, deaf on one ear spiritually, are we together? Cannot sense anything. Look at the little allowance the Holy Ghost has to communicate destiny things to him. So you can have a dream, but because you are spiritually blind, you will see nonsense. You will get up from that dream and write things that was not really what was revealed. Why? Because the problem is blindness. Remember, Paul was blind, but he was still seeing. He was, had, he was in a vision. He said, when you understand this, prayer is no longer about give me tea, give me bread. You are saying, Holy Spirit, you are at the mercy 
of my faculties of interaction. Your, your possibilities are limited by the space I give you. Could it be that if you were prayerful and you became sensitive, you would have been able, not just something dangerous, you would have been able to know. Let me tell you this. When you become very sensitive, the Holy Spirit, depending on the gravity of what is communicating, He can use multiple channels to strengthen your conviction. Very powerful what I'm sharing with you. We pray because it is a platform for growth and transformation. One of the hardest assignments of the Holy Spirit is to transfer the will of God from the heart of the Father to the mind of the saints. It is difficult. That's why when God finds one man who is aligned, you better stay out of the life and the way of that man. He will clear you for because he knows how hard it is. That's why the Bible says, Let him that has an ear. That means, it is possible that you don't have that ear. Son of man, he said, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. You can see wrongly. Let's go to number four. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? According to scripture. Number four. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Write it down please. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession don't worry wherever you can stand just find somewhere and stand a platform for warfare and intercession give us Acts chapter 12 let's study the early church Acts chapter 12 please it's a long reading but um, the verse of emphasis will be verse 5 and then we continue now please look up that prayer is a platform for warfare. Now, um, when I say warfare, especially in Africa, warfare means many things to many people. There are people who believe that warfare is some carnal confrontation of spirits in the flesh that is an ever continuous process without victory. I don't believe that. And then others also believe that the concept of warfare is just some kind of Christian talk that does not exist. I also don't believe that. There is a healthy balance concerning the subject of warfare that must be communicated. Acts chapter 12. Look up please. Now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So we are talking about a man here under the influence of wicked spirits to persecute the church. Please don't lose your focus, don't lose your attention. Two, and he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. So James is dead now. Number three, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, look at this wicked man, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, okay? During the feast. For, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So he's about to destroy someone, the pillars of the church. Next verse. Peter, look at this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without season. And when Herod would have brought him forth, that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Can you imagine it? Aside from the fact that he's in prison, the two soldiers held him, he's tied with chains. And they are also sleeping close to him. So that if he moves and they wake up, 
they can say, where are you going to? He was bound with two chains, but the, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Wait till next week when I will show you the ministry of prayer and the angels. The angelic ministry that excel in strength. If you do not understand the ministry of angels in prayer and the warfare dimension of prayer, you will get into trouble. The Bible is full of the ministry of angels in prayer. The angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly, and the chains fell up from his hand. They are praying and praying correctly because Jesus had taught them how to pray. Remember, before now, they were not getting results. Now, Jesus had mentored them, and the, the apostles now were mentoring the early church. So, there was no confusion as to whether the prayer would be answered or not. And while they prayed, Something was happening in the realm of the spirit because the Bible says that let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And so an angel came from heaven to make sure what is in heaven happens in the earth. He came to that prison and he said, God thyself, angels can speak and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. This is the angel. Next verse. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was in a vision. Look at this. He was already so used to visions. He didn't know whether it was real or it was a visionary experience. When they were past the first, the second world, they came to the iron gate, which led to the city, which opened of its own accord. And they went out and passed through the street and forthwith the angel departed and said, you can go. Now, my brothers and my sisters, look at this. These are not parables. Can these things happen again? Why are they not happening? If this is true and scripture cannot be broken, that men prayed and physical angels... Let me give you... Let me give you a story. I like teaching on these kinds of things. Listen, I have many, many stories on this. Let me give you one of my... Okay, that would be the second or the third encounters with angels in the body now, not in visions. I was in Abuja um, one year, I can't remember, and then I got into a, a bus and I highlighted I was at Mararaba, you know, and my wallet fell and everything fell and the bus had gone. I was with one of my friends. And, you know, it was so frustrating for me. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I hope it will, it will be when we're trying to prepare for one of our crusades or so. And then everything had gone. And the town, it was busy. You would not even know which of the buses or who. Someone would have carried it. And I pleaded with my friend. I said, please, you have to just get a bike and then go to maybe where the park is and then they'll begin to check i stood there and i was just praying in the spirit and i remember the scripture that just came he shall put his angels charge over thee and all of that now i tell the truth and i lie not i fear god i was standing there and the next thing a man is limping remember the story a man is limping with my wallet and brings to me and says take and just turns and goes away And I'm standing there and I'm looking at this man. What is your name? Who are you? At least let me say thank you. And after a while, I, I cannot remember seeing the man again. The first time we were going to hold our crusade in Joss, we were there and quite honestly we were confused and we did not know what to do. Suddenly a stranger walks up to me and says, get a bus and get a loud megaphone. He said, go around the city, remember, and do publicity. I never saw that man again. Angels are real. Our carnality has reduced us to a point where we don't even have the eyes and the perception. You will be, you will be joking to think everyone standing here is a human being. Do you know, I, I tell you the truth and I lie not. There are many times I shared it, I started sharing it during the early days of Koinonia, but you notice I stopped. 
I stopped saying it for a reason. There are times that I would be ministering like this. And suddenly, you know, many things happen as a man of God when you are ministering. You cannot say everything. There are times that I'm standing here already and I'm having multiple visionary experiences while I'm ministering. It's training. With time, your spirit is, you, you understand it so you are not distracted. And there are many times when God opens my eyes. Now I see people, now not from the body. I now see the spirit man of people. And suddenly, you know in the realm of the spirit, you will know that it's an angel now. Because they excel in light. And suddenly you will check and you will find out that, ah, uh ah. -uh, this person sitting down is not a human being. The moment they see me and we make contact, they will just stand up gradually and walk out. I've seen this thing many times when Koinonia started. I used to say it, but eventually I kept quiet because I don't want people to build their monuments. You know, people start to make all this uh, idolatry and the rest. So I understand what this scripture is saying. Listen, let me tell you, warfare is real. And it is important to be able to bet victory. James chapter 5 and verse 13 we pray because it is an instrument of warfare. What is warfare? Establishing the will of God in spite of the contentions of darkness. That's warfare. Engaging scripture. Engaging the mysteries of the kingdom in prayer to establish the will of God. Satan will never let your destiny go, not without a battle. Just because God said all things are yours, does not mean all things will come to you. Just because um, God said, oh, you'll be a great man, you'll be, he will attack you, he will attack your children, he will attack everything that can be attacked. I believe in warfare. When it is biblically engaged. I believe that any believer who sits down and allows his destiny to move by default is in trouble. He will never win in life. Are we together? Warfare and intercession. What is intercession? Standing in the gap for someone else. Standing in the gap for a territory. Making petitions to heaven on behalf of an individual, on behalf of a territory. Listen, do you know why God allowed for intercession? Because of this explanation I'm giving. Because assuming, for instance, the spirit of death is attempting to take my life this night. And I do not have the faculty to discern. I can become a victim of it. And that means my destiny and all who are connected to me will be in trouble. So God, see, this is how it is. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a revelation of God's mercy. The mercy of God starts moving around that territory. To find who has the discernment and the will to obey God. Do you understand? So it's like a cloud. The Holy Ghost will come upon somebody in his room. He will shake up and say, God forbid, I need to sleep. The Holy Ghost will live quietly. Find another house. But somehow, he will just come to someone who just gets up and says something is wrong. He now says, pray. Pray in the Spirit. And while you are praying, he does not know why he's praying. And I do not even know him. But because he's in the body, his prayer life will now save me. That's why when we get to heaven, many people receive thank you for things. They say, well, what is that? He said, in 1999, remember one three days fast you did that you don't even know what it was for. That fast was what secured the man who would later become the president. But you will never know that it was your prayer. If Anna the prophetess did not intercede for Jesus, they would have killed him. Believe me. If Jesus could not die, the angel would not say he wrong he was in the flesh the only thing is that the body will not decay are we together anna the prophetess was praying imagine this kind of intercessor she sacrificed her life since her husband died see i'm teaching you many things in this series because if anna the prophetess were in our generation and you saw Anna the prophetess and saw Apostle Joshua Selman. Anna the prophetess will bow to me and say, you are the great man of God and we are the quiet people. Whereas you do not know that the way things happen in the realm of the spirit, those that may be making the greatest impact may not be the Joshua Selmans and all of these people. As visible as we look, there will be one quiet mama somewhere that is the backbone behind our success that we may never know 
God gives this mama a mandate and says, Mama, you have 30 more years to live. And your assignment every day is to pray for someone called Joshua Selman. Where is he in the world? You don't need to know him. I may never know that the health of this ministry, the health of my life, primarily may be founded upon that deep intercessory ministry. If you really find an intercessor somewhere, not just a, 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 a lazy person who just says I'm an intercessor, but a real intercessor, respect them. See, if I bless you, you see me, I prophesy to you, you will package, uh, uh, help those under the anointing, you will package offering and come and give me. Is that true? If I speak over your life, they can carry that message all around the world. People will watch the videos and see me speaking. They will open doors for me. But if I intercede for you, there is no man who will see me to say thank you. These are the people who are greatly prized in the spirit. Some of them are here. They don't even believe that they are in ministry. I just have the grace for intercession. Do you know there are times that I'm sleeping and it's as if they are soaking me inside hot water. I know somebody somewhere is shouting on heaven on me. I can always say, allow me to sleep small now. There are times I know it's prayer band. That fire is coming from prayer band Tuesday. <laughs> there are times I know that individuals are just praying. They pray for Jesus. The Bible never said Anna the prophetess stopped praying after the dedication. She just said, my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Intercession is powerful. Listen to me. Don't sit back and allow the devil destroy your loved ones. I shared with you the story about my mom. One time that I saw what I saw. You must learn to pray. Some of you are not only lazy spiritually. You are responsible for the pain of many people. This is why sometimes when God is quarreling people, you think you are innocent. He will come and say, you are part of the reasons why these people are not doing well. Oh God, why? I put a burden on you to pray one time and you just carelessly said, it's not my business. There are selfish believers until God, that's why God will use the face of someone you love. It's not that something is wrong with that person. That's the only way. It's not always demons. It is the only way to wake you up to pray. Because if you saw another person, your selfishness will not allow you to stand up. So you see the face of the person who promised to marry you. And say, no, God, this cannot happen. I've waited long. And God said, that's it. You will be rewarded for praying. But that was the only skill to be able to lift you. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. James 5.13 Is any man afflicted? He says, let him do what? Is any man afflicted? The biblical approach to affliction is any man challenged by a situation you cannot understand? Before you sit down and start using your brain. Because you see, in the flesh you will calculate wrongly. What is going on? My children suddenly are falling sick in a way that I cannot explain. Suddenly money is disappearing in this family. Suddenly my wife, my husband, my children, it's like there is no peace. Suddenly my grandmother is hating me. I came out in the morning. Three accidents before returning back home already. If you are sensitive, that is affliction. The Bible says, don't sit down and start discussing scientifically. It says, start praying. Because when you pray, among the many things that happen is that you begin to perceive. You are allowing your spirit man in partnership with the Holy Spirit to draw forth what the real issue is and communicate to you. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever been confident about a decision? You were so bold until you prayed. Somewhere in that prayer, you stood and said, God, thank you. This is how I would have died. You felt like Ghana is the place God is sending you. In fact, everything in you was just spelling Ghana until you went to pray. When that prayer was done, you were embarrassed. 
you just stood there and said, so this is how I would have been on my way. Are we together? Yes. You know powerful believers by this one thing. They will tell you, Kai, I want to do this, this and that. And then two weeks later, they just keep quiet. They say, you won't do it again. I know what has happened to them. They have, they have gone to fine tune that thing. A brother just looks at a sister and can almost be confident. I say, no, Abba, I know based on what I'm feeling, this is my wife. Until you go to pray. While you are praying, the flesh and the feelings are giving way to destiny. And when you rise up, then you will know that you would have made nonsense of your life. You now come back and say, thank you, Jesus. Are we together? Someone can come to you and say, I'm a real estate mogul. I'm this and that and that. And you are sitting down. You want to carry all your land papers and everything and give the person. And you just say, okay, let me just sleep over it, sir. Would you come tomorrow morning? Say, oh, fine, no problem. Until you are sleeping in the night and you wake up and begin to pray. And you find out that your entire destiny would have gone down because of lack of discernment. When believers don't pray, you know a believer who does not pray by the repetition of trouble that he always gets into. See, when you are getting into trouble again and again, every bad thing waits till you come, then it happens. Something is wrong with your prayer life. I'm telling you this. Let's hurry up. I'll give us two and then we'll end. Is this series already blessing you? Number what now? Why do we pray? Can you imagine we're just on why we pray? Why do we pray? Number five. Prayer according to scripture is a strategy to keep your faith alive. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. Luke chapter 22. Media, please give us quickly. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30 to 32. Luke chapter 22, please. That ye may eat and drink at my table and all of that and all of that. 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you like a possession. Right? And that he may sift you like wheat. Huh? He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. So how does Satan sift men? He does something to your faith. What is faith? Conviction. Conviction. Listen, when Satan wants to sift you like wheat, remember the Bible said a double-minded man, let him not think he will receive anything from the Lord. So when Satan wants to make sure you don't receive anything, he will begin to make you doubt your convictions. He will manipulate the flesh realm and make sure that what you believe, God, but didn't you tell me this by January? And now you are thinking, is it God? Is it not God? Satan is attempting to sift you. Is it really extraordinary fruitfulness? God, this is September. Did Apostle really hear God well? Because it looks like it would have been the year where your stamina is built. Because this is my thing. It's been, I've, I've not seen any fruitfulness. Satan is sifting you like which, let me tell you. And he says when you pray, you stop your faith from failing, your conviction. There are many things that believing them may be difficult for you, but start praying. Start praying. A word has been spoken concerning you. Ah, by November, by December, this would have happened. Doors would have opened. You will say, Amen, but you too, you know you don't believe it. Your pain has overwhelmed. You are used to prophecies not coming to pass. So you don't believe it. But when you begin to pray, something begins to happen in your spirit, man. It's like a gate. It's like a compression that is broken. Suddenly you can believe God. Yes, this is real. Lord, I know you are able to do it. Prayer is a way that we keep our faith alive. Let me give us one more. Number six. Why do we pray? The sixth reason why we pray is that it is a platform 
to make requests and petitions. Prayer is the authorized biblical platform to table your requests and to make petitions. You don't make petitions in this kingdom by complaining. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. Let me tell you this. Most believers do not pray. Most of what we think is prayer is just blind, fleshly, carnal argument. What is this? Is this how life will treat me? And God, you are watching like that? Are you praying? No, you are not praying. You are lamenting. Lamentation does not have a harvest of answered prayer. No. Unto him that answers prayer, hears prayer, not complaints. Hears prayer, not grumbling. Mark eleven twenty four, please quickly. Our time is gone. Mark eleven twenty four, and then Philippians chapter four and verse six. Mark eleven twenty four. Look at this. Jesus is teaching now. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Everybody say desire. desire. One more time. Say desire. desire. When you pray. Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall what? Three things. One, your desire. Number two, reception. Number three, manifestation. You first receive before you have. You cannot have what you have not received. You don't receive things physically. You receive them in the realm of the spirit. You have them physically. So it says, what things soever ye desire. Prayer is the channel that makes your desire to be received and then to manifest when you pray so you can have desires and leave them there and you find out that nothing ever changes in your life desires philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 philippians 4 and verse 6 look up please let's read together our time is gone but please read with me one to read be careful for nothing hold on the word there careful um it's not, it's not trying to say you should live a careless life. Are we together? The word careful there, um, what's, what's the expression now? Huh? The word there is anxiety. Are we together now? Other versions will correct it and say be anxious for nothing. Right? So, be anxious, let's use for nothing. Then it says, but in everything. That means there is no matter that you should not pray for. In everything. The Bible does not isolate certain things and say, don't pray for them. Are we together? There is no issue that cannot be prayed for. This is where we must put a little correction to our teaching on finance. A lot of people say, prayer has nothing to do with finance. Uh -uh. There are keys. Are we together? Anytime prayer is not the key, prayer is the hand that holds the key. In any case, you will still need prayer. Either as the key or the hand that will hold the key to open the door. A key does not open itself. So prayer is important. The Bible says in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. This is a very interesting scripture. Because in one of the scriptures we read, the Bible says, For your heavenly Father already knows the things that you need. And now he's saying, Make your request known to God. God wants the saints to make their request known. Because he answers prayers. You have many requests. Oh God, my house rent. Oh God, the issue of my stubborn child. Oh God, the issue of my destiny. I'm tired of escorting men in life, not knowing where I stand. Oh God, the issue of my finances. Oh God, the issue of fruitfulness. Oh God, the issue of this and that. The issue of my job. It's been 10 years, 20 years now, no job. The Bible says, don't be ashamed to make your request known unto God. That means it is not out of scripture when you pray in understanding. You can make your request known in God to God. Are you seeing why sometimes we come with our request here at Miracle Service? We are making it known to God. It is scriptural. God wants to know. Bring before him your request because he will answer. James chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. James chapter 4 Now look up. Look up. God is speaking now. 
requests are very important in as much as prayer is not is not just for only asking things there is a major part of prayer that was designed to allow your petitions reach heaven the bible says ye lost and have not that means ye desire so strongly and yet you don't have it ye kill huh, and desire to have and cannot obtain you fight that means look at the alternatives you have introduced whereas prayer would have still given it to you the inability to have prayed will make you to desire in an ungodly way that thing whether money or whatever and to kill even because of it and then to fight because of it it says ye have not simply because you ask not that means if you can ask there will be no reason to kill no jealousy none of these things because the same lord is rich unto all he's saying if you don't know how to ask you will continue to admire people and to hate people's breakthroughs and to hate their testimonies as though god isolated them and blessed them alone if you know how to ask the bible says you have not and you ask not then it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss what we started correcting okay that he may consume it upon your lust. We'll deal with it, the patterns of prayer. What does it mean to consume it upon your lust? That means the ultimate scope of your desire is just to satisfy yourself. There is nothing kingdom in it. You will now understand the prayer of Jesus. Thy kingdom come. It is within the scope of the kingdom that he says, give us our daily bread. Give us our daily bread so that we'll be strong enough to continue making your kingdom come. Once you detach the kingdom, you also detach the possibility for your daily bread. Your daily bread is connected to your desire and your participation in making his kingdom come. This is what he's saying. Listen to my teaching for your glory. Where I teach that in this kingdom, God is not obliged to stand and partner with you on any matter that does not have a provision to give him glory our selfish world has mastered how to use the realm of the spirit to draw realities for our own personal desires why do you want a child why do you want the marriage why do you want the prosperity apostle i'm tired people have been looking down on me I'm, i want them to know that i'm not a nobody and God says that is the kind of nonsense prayer that will not be answered. Why won't it be answered? Because there is no provision for kingdom in it. Are we together now? Oh God, I want all my children to excel. Why? So that everybody will know that I'm not a small woman. And God says this is a joke. Not in my kingdom. It's not done that way. Lord, I want money to buy a new wrapper. Why? So that every woman in that church will know that me too, I'm not a... I'm not... You know, this and, and God looks at all these things and says, what do you think I am? An ATM uh, uh, machine? He's the Lord of all. But let him find your heart plugged towards his kingdom come. Father, I'm trusting you to give me twins so that I can hurry up and have children and have the grace to serve you. God says, before you finish, twins are on their way coming. You will roast every devil on the way between the second heavens and that womb and make sure those twins come. Let me tell you this. I have learned something about God. You want to see the speed of God in your life? Die to yourself and say, Lord, this is about you. 